Hey everyone, uh, I have a video for you here, and this is basically how I make car parts for my race car. So the car is SCCA F mod. Uh, if you know me and you know the car, it's the Doof Wagon. Um, it's awesome. It's super fun to drive, and a lot of the parts that are on it, uh, I have built and designed. And this is kind of how I go through that process. So if you've been uh, following along at home lately, uh, you know that I've been working on some new uprights. And these are, you know, this part that I'm showing you on the screen right now is it. Uh, this is a new kind of upright spindle assembly um, that's going to go in the car with a whole new uh, hub and everything. But the spindle itself is what I'm showing you now. And I thought I'd just kind of walk you through the process of how I uh, have drawn the part and how I build it and, you know, how you can use you know tools that you have at home to make parts. So the first thing is uh, obviously getting a design put together. Uh, it's done using, I use this program which is called Fusion 360. It's from Autodesk. Uh, it's free for personal use. Um, so if you're a non-commercial entity, uh, you can make parts at home for your own personal stuff. Uh, if you're gonna be selling parts, you have to buy a license for it. It's actually very powerful for what it does um, and it's you know, once you get through kind of the initial learning curve, um, it's actually pretty easy to use. You know, it's not too bad. And there's some really good tutorials online about the initial, like just how you start with the program. So for this part, uh, again, this is, like I said, my spindle, my upright. I can kind of show you from the very beginning. If you look down at the bottom here, it is a, this is basically the history. This is the tree on how everything was built. So I can go back to the very, very beginning with a blank canvas and go to my very first step, which was um, I had drawn before my, my upright assembly and I wanted to bring in that angle so I didn't have to remeasure everything. So this is showing me basically the angle between, you know, this line which connects the upper control arm and the lower control arm to the car. Um, so this kingpin angle and then my spindle angle. So it tells me that that, that is 101.5 degrees. So it's basically, you know, 11.5 degrees off from, from a perfect rounded angle. But that's the number that I needed. So once I had that in, I also need to know approximately where my brake rotor was gonna live so that I could put my brake caliper in the correct location. So once I had all that together, I started sketching out what I thought would be a good shape for my new setup. So this is kind of what I came up with. Was, um, let me get back here real quick. So this is what I came up with, was this shape. With all these extra holes and everything that are in it, but you know, this was just an idea. So once I had what I thought, just kind of sketched out what I thought would be a good shape, I decided to make solid parts out of it. So using a couple programs, and I won't get too detailed into how to use the program, um, but I started making uh, what are basically solid bodies. So I can rotate this in, three, six, or in uh, 3D, and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so as I added more and more bodies to it, uh, to kind of bring out the and fill in some of the details on how I wanted to build everything. Um, you kind of get an idea of what the build process was like as far as the digital build. Um, I'll just let it play here real quick. So anyway, uh, so once I had everything done and sketched out and kind of figured out what my process was gonna be digitally, um, started kind of fine tuning some details, <coughs> excuse me, and trying to figure out exactly uh, what you know angles needed to be and where specific parts need to be, I spent quite a bit of time. You'll see up on the on the top side here um, a couple different revisions of the steering arm because I want to make sure I got the Ackerman just right. So that was my first guess here, and then kind of made a bunch of sketches which I'm hiding because they're they're crazy to look at. Um, kind of bump some things along came up with this shape, which is kind of finalized now for the steering arm. Um, I guess I can show you at least that sketch so you can see it, which is, so here's the sketch that I made to 
kind of show my steering Ackerman angles to make sure I got my Ackerman in the correct spot. Anyway, once I got uh, my solid bodies made and everything kind of figured out, um, I was able to take these digital parts and I printed out um, kind of like the flat view of each individual part. So I can actually go through and just, you know, if I wanted to isolate, let's say I just want to look at just this, you know, just this kind of upright side here. So I can go through and hide all the other stuff So here, here's just the upright side. And if I look at this, this is a nice flat plane, right? So just a flat piece of metal that has been cut into this shape with these holes drilled in these locations and this slot kind of milled in the center of it. So making this at home would be tricky, um, but it could be done. You now you could basically print out this picture in a one-to-one -one scale, glue it to a piece of steel, and then get the jigsaw and sander out and cut out the shape um, and then you know put in your whole centers and then have to cut that slot. So that would be tricky but it could be done at home. Uh, in order to kind of save myself some time I went ahead and placed an order online with a website called oshcut.com. You can basically send them the digital file um, and they will cut it out with a laser and send you back cut out parts that are perfectly dimensioned. So uh, that was surprisingly inexpensive. Um, I bought enough metal to cut everything for the spindles, um, everything for some brake rotors that I had designed, and a couple other little jigs and alignment parts, and I think the grand total was $260, and that was enough to do four complete upright assemblies, so, and two brake rotors. So, you know, the price per completed unit, you know, obviously you still have to weld and put everything together, but I thought that was a very fair price, uh, and that includes material also. So OSHcut.com, they were very helpful with this project. So anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do today, actually I'm getting ready to, I've got the whole thing pretty much assembled except for my steering. So I've got completed, let's see, let me get everything showing here. Uh, so this is basically what I have built. And what I need to do is put on the steering block. So the steering block is going to be welded to the upright so that my steering arms, which are these pieces here, can be bolted on. And I can swap out individual parts so I can adjust and make fine-tuned spot or fine-tuned adjustments to the Ackerman setting to make sure the steering feel is correct. And another thing with the car, again, it's a modified car, so we can change anything. Um, you know, I have a full manual system, steering system. Some guys have um, power steering in their cars or at least a power assist in their cars so with the full manual system like the length of this arm really matters because that's how much leverage you have to turn the wheel so a longer arm gives you more leverage it's easier to turn but also slows your steering down um, a shorter arm you know is the opposite harder to turn faster steering faster response time so this distance is important and then obviously the location of the actual steering hole the the part where your tie rod attaches is important too because that sets the Ackerman for the car. So anyway, uh, let's do this next part which is I want to lay this location for the steering block out on my spindle which is assembled. So in order to do that I'm going to basically print out this picture with the steering block on a piece of paper and then I can cut out that piece of paper and stick it to my steering arm so I can make sure that that block goes in that exact location because that height is important obviously because that sets your bump steer so I'm gonna make sure that, that height is in the correct spot and then also obviously left to right. Uh, one of the things I did do to make it easier to adjust left to right as you can see the steering block basically lines up with this outside edge at this corner and at the opposite corner lines up down here. So that'll help me make sure it gets you know in this horizontal plane lined up just where I need it to be and then in the vertical plane you know that'll be set by you know, like I said using that piece of paper so it just as a guide as a jig and then I can tack and get it welded on there so for now I'm going to hit pause on the video camera and we will make that print all right so I made that drawing uh, it's right here and printed it out so printed it on you know this 
regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, you know, if it was bigger than that, I would just, you know, space it out and, you know, make multiple sheets and then just, you know, cut and tape pieces together to get a bigger print. I've done that many times before. Um, but again, this is just to be kind of a template, a jig, uh, to make sure I get the, the spacing and location right on the piece that I made. So the next step is to go arts and crafts and basically cut out, um, you know, the, the outline of what I needed so I can stick it to the part that's out in the garage and weld that, you know, that little block on there. So time to go get crafty with it and get the scissors out and make some stuff. All right, so we got our part cut and, you know, one of these. Let's run to the garage and stick it together. All right, you come with me. Don't mind the dirty house. Oh, there she is. The doof wagon. Definition of garage built. All right, let me get uh, everything set up and I'll catch you in just a second. All right, so here we are out in the garage uh, at the workbench. Uh, you know, it's never clean, mostly because it's always getting used, right? So anyway, uh, so at the workbench and here is the part. So here is the hub assembly. Um, we can talk some more about this in a little bit, but here's the spindle. Probably looks, hopefully, a lot like what we saw on, on the screen, except for the fact that some parts are removable right now because it's not fully assembled. So this is the upright. Here's the paper template. Um, real quick, here's what the parts look like when I got them back from the uh, laser cutter. So laser cutting is cool uh, in the fact that, you know, obviously we're using energy, you know, a laser to pierce and then cut the circles. I don't know if that will show very well. Maybe it will. Um, there's like a dark ring that's around each and around the entire part. That's because the laser will actually like harden the edge. So as long as you don't have to come back through and you know do any work, you have this kind of annealed edge, um, which is a great, especially for like bolt holes, because it helps toughen up the material right there where the bolt is going to go through. If you're going to do a bunch of post machining to a part, I would tell you to have it water jet cut because the water jet won't do, you know, it won't change the metallurgy of the, or on the outside. So here's what some of the parts look like. Again, all flat cut parts, which makes it really simple to kind of, you know, piece together the whole thing. Um, actually, I can show you the jig that I used to weld everything up. Again, flat piece of paper, also flammable, which is fun. Um, so I had a shaft that kind of acted as my spindle that ran through both pieces and then had the part sitting on here so this one would have been right here and kind of tacked everything together um you know the other one was on this side and got that way everything you know is hopefully going to line up you know again it's a pretty critical measurement between the lower and upper control arm mounts and the spindle you know that angle that 11.5 degrees i was talking about earlier so anyway that's that jig. I do like to use paper prints for a lot of things just because it's cheap and easy. So you can see once I get this thing lined up on here, goes right about there-ish. Looks like I've got to grind that well down a little bit so that my block will tack on there in the correct spot. So I will use the power of video editing to speed that up a little bit. Let's see what I can do. Hey, magic. All right, so that's all cleared off. Like my little baby vice. <laughs> okay, so part, template. I know this thing goes roughly there-ish. which means this piece, which I know that, so uh, I made these earlier. Um, this is obviously that steering block that goes on here. Like I said before, it should be so that this top corner and this back corner kind of all line up in the correct spot on the piece. And using my little paper template, 
Um, should get me really close to the correct location. Um, it should be right about there-ish. So what I'll do now is kind of get some things traced out, um, get a clamp on here so I can hold it in the correct spot, and then tack weld it in the correct location. It's got, uh, I did this little kind of, I don't know if you can see that pretty well. Um, it's got a, it's got a little curve to there to give me a little bit more surface area when I put it on here so I can get it a little bit more into the material because otherwise it's going to be really close to the edge. So that should give me a little bit stronger bond there. Um, and again, I'll fill in this top and bottom um, and kind of grind it back a little bit to make sure I have enough attachment room for my plates. Uh, but this thing will be pretty strong on there. Again, that's where all the steering torque goes and is applied to the wheel. So it does need to be stuck on there pretty well. Anyway, uh, that's how I make parts. Again, this is the spindle that's kind of in process. And maybe once I get further along, I'll do another video if, if anyone is curious. Um, but yeah, so time to get, uh, get the rig out and get some parts laid out. But a lot of people, again, been hearing more and more, I wish I could do this stuff. You can, it doesn't take any special, super special skills. Um, it is pretty nice to have, you know, I have a TIG torch, or I mean a TIG welder um, that I've been teaching myself. And so these are all, you know, home taught, homeschooled uh, TIG welds that are on here. Um, I also have a MIG uh, welder. MIG is super easy. Um, there's a lot of places. I know there's a place here in Kansas City that has, uh, it's kind of like a maker space and they have like an intro to welding class so that you can do that. Um, a lot of guys, if you're just involved in your, you know, local race club, um, just put on their, put on their forums or on their Facebook page or wherever, you know, I want to learn to weld. And I guarantee you any of the guys that are in the club would be more than happy to kind of give you at least a intro to welding. And if you brought them some small parts, if you don't have a welder yet, um, would be more than happy to, to tack those together. So, but that's about it. That's how I made this. And that's how I'm going to continue to make this, which is free software online, that Fusion 360 program, totally free for home users, uh, with a printer to print out parts. And with using some online sources for like that OSH cut I was talking about um, to source for material and getting material pieces cut. Um, oh, this little part right here, here's a jig that I had them cut for me so that I could buy some local steel here, which is just, this is just three quarter by three quarter square. And that way, you know, once I cut it to the correct dimension, it fits. Um, so I could get all my holes drilled and make sure that the holes are in the correct location. But you know, if you make the design smart, uh, like this one, which is all flat planes, um, you don't have to have anything that is bent or crazy it makes the assembly work substantially easier. And especially if you take your time and do it in the off season, um, you know, this thing doesn't have to be put together in a week. You know, we're not out here as a production place trying to spend as little time as possible to make as much money. We wanna make parts that will last and work on the car. Plus for me, this is part of the hobby is learning how to make parts like this and trying to make the car faster and better. So that's all I got for today. Uh, like I said, I'll do another one if you guys want to see it um, as I get further along and try, try to get some other parts together. Could probably talk some more about the hub, uh, why I chose this, and all that other fun stuff. So we'll catch you later. Thanks.